you all. Um, hopefully we'll have a chance for a bit of a dialogue. I'm, I'm just feeling slightly edgy at this moment, thinking not quite what I signed up for. I signed up for a bunch of people who weren't used to doing this kind of thing. So I'm now thinking, ooh, grandparents egg-sucking, rearrange that sentence in any order you want, which is obviously the reflection on your collective wisdom and experience. Nothing else, not age, obviously, particularly tell me. <laughs> but uh, one of the things I want to do today is to build on a couple of themes that have been um, uh, given to us so far. So there's a really kind of building on the high-tech, whizzy, uh, gadgetry thing uh, that I'm going to build on. Um, so I've brought all the resources in our department that are high-tech and whizzy, I've got those with me, so we'll hold to play with those hopefully later. And I'm going to build on Chris's theme of, of induction, hopefully, as well a little bit, but that's uh, as well as he did. But anyway, uh, what we're going to talk about very briefly um, is a little bit about why we should bother to get to know students. Um, it's maybe not quite as obvious as it, is, it seems, perhaps. Um, I've got some very practical tools for us to be able to do that uh, and some handouts if anybody is interested at the, at the end, um, which for a small fee you can take with you. Thank you, that small fee. <laughs> so that's just a, a, a bunch of resources and so on, most of which have been plagiarised ruthlessly and for free from the net, but that sort of says a lot about the stuff that's out there that you can actually access really uh, easily. And if we get a chance, time dependent, um, hopefully have a go at uh, one or two of the activities. Okay. So, um, an obvious point perhaps for why we bother in terms of getting to know students and, and uh, as groups of students and so on. The university, our university, all universities put loads of resources into student induction, transition activities, etc, etc. And, and that's, you know, this is a sort of smiling happy faces that we see after we've been inducted. We've took that box and here we have a student in glorious isolation, learning fully. But of course, I would argue that it's not actually ever as simple as that. And in fact, we are all social beings to a greater or lesser extent. And actually, group membership is incredibly important uh, for all students, all individuals. And group the opposite of group membership, group isolation, is the factor that is the most commonly associated with clinical depression, far more so than drugs, alcohol, etc. So this is a long way of saying, if we don't spend time again and again, not just one kind of activity of inducting students, making sure that they are actually properly engaged, properly getting to know each other in a positive way, if we don't spend time doing that, then it's at our peril. So all the stuff that we do at the university, in terms of open days and transition events, those sort of things, are great. But actually, what's more important for me at least, um, is spending time with the students, really getting to know them, getting to know each other, then getting to know each other in a positive way um, and doing fun, fun things together that we can, that they can actually uh, go out of the classroom and feel that the safe learning environment, something that Chris alluded to, has actually been created for them. It's a, it's a time where they can actually learn. And if any of you have come across Maslow, it's a bit hackneyed now, the, the idea that of hierarchy of needs, unless you have some of those lower level needs met, you're not going to get to that wonderful place where we're getting high performing students. If they drop out, apart from a few hours, it costs us a great deal of money. Spending too money management, I think, at this stage. So what I'm suggesting is that one of the things we should be focused on all the time, not just at one activities, is, is doing stuff with students that allows them to get to really know each other and, and ourselves. So it's that centrality of relationships uh, that's important. So, um, again, apologies for the ex looking and grandparents in any of this, and perhaps we have a chance to, to share some other activities at some, at some stage that people may have used and so on. But these are the sort of things that are quick, easy, resource-free, more or less. Um, and again, the handout's got all the explanations and so on, how those all work and the links to those. You can do this type of activity, paired introductions, really quickly, really easily, in more or less every session or, or a couple of times in a module, etc. Getting students to work with each other that they haven't worked with, going to some of the next to some of they don't know, introduce the other, talk to each other, listening exercises, so they're actually spending a minute or so. Only takes perhaps five minutes at the beginning of a session. One student talks to the other, uh, the other student then introduces key facts about that student that they want to disclose to the rest of the group. And, and it goes and it goes round in a big circle. That's the sort of thing that you can do really, really easily and really quickly. And you can of course tailor it to the topic. So it can be find out the other person's name, why they're interested in this topic, what they find hard about this topic, what they find easy about this topic, that type of thing. You can tailor that uh, really, really well. 
Um, alliterative name games, I don't know if people have used those. Apparently they can work in groups of up to 70, I've seen them working groups of up to 50, so it doesn't just have to be a small seminar. These things can all be done in fairly large groups. Um, so the alliterative name games, big circle, one person starts off, it has to be something positive to say about themselves. So today I can't be John this gene, I've got to be, I've got to be kind of jingoistic, I've got to, I can't be jealous, I've got to be something positive, so I could be jumping gene. So I introduced myself as Jumping Gene, a little action to go with it. Many of you will cover this type of thing on the uh, PG Cert if, you, if you've done that uh, activity. And it goes around the room with people repeating that alliterative name game. So by the end of the session, relatively quite quickly, you will know something about another person to build on as, as positive. Uh, I love this. We'll have to find something more PC than speed dating, but this can be used at the beginning to get groups to come together. You just have a long line of chairs one way, a similar number of people this way. So we start off here, literally a minute each, doing that one person talking to the other, repeating, blowing a whistle, moving around, everybody moves around. So everybody gets to talk to each other really, really um, quickly. But just to break the ice, to get people to move about, um, just to try and help with that safe learning environment. Many of you will see this type of thing before. I've put an example here. Um, so everybody has a piece of paper, again the resources are in PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoints for you there. You can make this very specific to the topic, the area. So this has got a um, statement saying, find somebody who has been to, in a concert, uh, been to a live concert in the last six months. Well that may or may not be relevant, it might just be a fun thing that you want to do. But you might want to tailor it to the areas of the topic that you're focused on. So you can very easily, very quickly um, change those questions. And the idea is that everybody has a piece of paper, they go around to find and talk to them, they don't know to find out who has got three pets or whatever it happens to be. But you can make that quite relevant to that, that um, area as well. And then of course there's a little prize for the person who gets the, the, the names against each of these, these boxes, so found somebody else who's living in the country, etc. Once you've got all of these boxes completed, it's a bingo, that's how, hence a human bingo. But these type of activities can be tailored very much to, to help you move on to the next bit of whatever it is that you're, you're teaching at that stage in the time. Um, another quick one, again, uh, getting the group, and again it can work you can, uh, in, with very big groups actually, you can split them into groups of say 10, and then within the 10, mixing people up randomly, people have to work out whose birthday, for example, um, everybody has, and then they've got to uh, align themselves, so you're starting people with a January birthday here, all the way down to people with a December birthday over there, similarly with height, all the shoe size, all that kind of thing is, is possible. And again, quite a quick activity just to warm people up and, and get them uh, going. In terms of safe um, learning environments, one of the things that um, I sometimes spend a bit of time with students doing is working out what their ground rules are going to be, trying to get a bit of participation there. Um, I tend to just have a, a series of fairly common statements about ground rules um, and then get students in small groups to order them and then to have a discussion about that. Whether it makes any, any difference, of course, to the, the classroom management, yeah, sometimes it needs to be repeated quite uh, frequently, but it's a quick way to get some discussion going, getting people to know each other and hopefully foster this idea of a safe learning environment. Gee, we're nearly out of time. Paper tarot exercise is a clip and, and I brought all the strings as well. Um, treasure trail, Chris has talked about, and here are lots of different ideas of how to do a treasure trail. Treasure trail. Um, but the one that is one of my favourites is a string connection, and it's this high-tech device I've got here. So again, groups of 10 and 12 in circles, you start off however you want to say, it could be about, you know, the first sentence could be something as simple as where I went for my holiday. So I hold this, tell people where I went for my holiday, for example, and then somebody picks up and says, oh, I've been there as well, and so you go on until you your circle is completed and everybody is connected. Everybody within the group is connected in lots of different interesting ways. Did you enjoy that?